Well, just as promised, we have a discussion on the International Tea Day, which is celebrated uh, every 21st of May. And uh, we have our guest in studio. But before I introduce the guest, did you know that tea is the second most drunk beverage in the world after water? Well, in fact, it is said that in 2021, 297 billion liters of tea were consumed worldwide. Well, in Kenya, tea is the beverage of choice for breakfast at mealtimes. And of course, we cannot forget the famous four o'clock tea. Now, the story of tea dates back, that is to 5,000 years ago, first grown in China before it spread to the rest of the world, including Kenya. And as the International Tea Day approaches on the 21st of May, we seek to know what does the day mean to those in the tea industry and the different types of teas produced here in Kenya. Well, our guest in studio this morning is Dr. Mary Musheri. She's the director, Tea Institute and Senior Lecturer, at Food and Institutional Sciences at Karatina University. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Musheri, for being here. Thank you very much. You know, I never thought that we could actually talk so much about tea, except for the fact that it should be in my cup, and I'm actually supposed to just drink it. But during my research, I found that there's a lot that goes on before you find that tea maybe in the, in the shelf or on the shelf or even making it, uh, you know, as a cup of tea, you know, for you to take uh, at home. Uh, but before I delve into what is tea? Because it's, it looks like an obvious question, like what is tea? But International Tea Day, just what is it all about? Uh, thank you very much yeah. for this opportunity to be with you mm -hmm. uh, this morning. Yep. We are celebrating, it's not only ourselves, the International Tea Day is a global celebration because tea is grown in very many countries. However, in Kenya, we are proud of this particular day because Kenya is one of the best producers of CTC black tea, high quality, and uh, also we pride on the fact that our tea is organically grown. We don't put pesticides, unlike other countries. Mm -hmm. And so this celebration marks or is a very important celebration for us here in Kenya because it also touches on the small scale farmer up to the large scale farmers and on the fact that uh, like you said people say let's meet for a cup of tea yes and uh, therefore but why we are having this celebration is because lots of Kenyans only know about the CTC black tea however we do have many other types of teas okay so we'll be getting to the many types of teas. But if somebody asked you a simple question, uh, Dr. Mishiri, what is tea? Interesting, interesting question. <laughs> tea is a non-alcoholic uh, beverage that is taken or, or processed from tea bushes. Scientifically, we call it uh, sinesi, uh, camellia sinensis. Yes. Because why I say that is because there are things people are calling teas and they are not teas. They are plants or concussions they have put together mm -hmm. and they tell you, let's go for a cup of tea mm -hmm. and yet what they have given you maybe is just um, some herbs somewhere. Yeah. For a product to qualify to be tea, it must have the actual tea bush. Yeah. Of Which what you said is called what? It's called Camellia sinensis. That's a scientific name. Mm -hmm. And there are different varieties mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. However, and also... Let's note that there we have been growing in Kenya the green tea, green leaf. Yeah, the green leaf. But now we are also branding in Kenya because we have come up with a clone or a variety of purple tea. Yes. We'll get to purple tea, uh, Dr. Mosheri. Yeah. And just like you've rightly put it, so if I'm taking ginger and I'm saying I'm taking ginger tea, that's not ginger. It's not tea because it's not infused with the green leaf. So as, as, as long as it doesn't have the green leaf, or can we also call the other kind of infusion as teas? Like, thank you. There are also types of teas, like you said. We do have flavored teas. And, but by the time you call uh, a product or a beverage a tea, it must have some, at least 45% of the Camellia sinensis, the bush mm -hmm. that was processed. But if you're just taking uh, herbs that you put together and you're saying you're taking tea, I'm afraid not. Okay, uh, that's uh, fine. So as you can see uh, on the table there, we have, uh, you know, the different types of teas. We'll be coming to that and you'll be explaining to us what, um, you know, what we have uh, in front of us here. But let's get to the types of teas that are produced in Kenya. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, 
Kenya has been producing uh, mainly CTC black tea. Actually, 90% of our tea is the CTC black tea. Mm -hmm. Like I've said, a very high quality black tea. However, because of the diversification and people also getting conscious of health, other types of teas are growing very fast. And there are about, we can say about six types of teas mm -hmm. Um, besides the CTC black tea. Mm. And when mm. I say CTC, what, what does that mean? CTC, sorry, yeah. <laughs> CTC is a method of production mm -hmm. because the CTC black tea involves cutting when they're processing, okay. tearing, mm. and curling. If you look at that black tea, how it looks like. Okay. But the orthodox black tea that is going on in the market right now, and Kenya has started producing in the, even in the industry, mm -hmm. is tea that is produced from the whole leaf as well as black tea being black it's black because of the method of preparation mm -hmm. or processing mm -hmm. that is uh, involves uh, aeration or what we call oxidation however that orthodox uh, tea the leaf is left whole that's why it doesn't have the cut okay and then within there we have the specialty teas where there is no that oxidation mm -hmm. And that is what now is like growing in the market mm -hmm. because when analysis is done scientifically, you, you don't uh, like convert the bioactive compounds so much when you, you, you don't do a lot of aeration. Okay. However, even this aerated tea, there are compounds in tea that are known to have health benefits, even the CTC black tea. Okay. But the uncut and uh, unprocessed without aeration or oxidation, mm -hmm have even extra health benefits okay. besides the colors that you're going to see as we look. So is green tea part of, of oh, that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. That's why there's green tea. Mm -hmm. There is yellow tea that mm -hmm. you can see even before you. Okay. And so probably um, uh, in, in just, um, um, you know, a few seconds, PF1, what does that mean? Okay. When we process our um, CTC black tea, we have grading systems. Okay. And uh, the fact that we're saying grading does not mean that some are better than others. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's even by size. However, we also do know we can have premium tea. But we are coming to realize, even in the market, even what we thought was not premium, there are some countries that find it better mm -hmm. because of the way they want their tea to taste. Some want a harsh taste, others want it mild. Mm -hmm. So all the parts of the tea are, and the, and the different grades have got a market somewhere mm -hmm. globally okay. yes mm -hmm. we'll be coming to the, gra the, the, the the grading and you'll be telling us whether what we drink in kenya is premium <laughs> or, or where where that falls the, especially the ones that are affordable because again uh, the high quality the higher it is the more expensive it is now um I d before i delve into um you know what makes kenyan tea special because uh, just like you've mentioned, it's, um, you know, uh, worldwide, Kenyan tea is known to be one of the best. So is it the climatic conditions and all that? So we'll come to that, but before then, so explain to us what we have in front of us here, the different types of teas. Okay. Yeah. And probably you could also touch on um, how they're produced, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, in Kenya, we are more used to the uh, black, black tea. tea. Yes. Black tea, which we are uh, encouraging Kenyans to even take it black. You only need a little pinch. You don't need to boil for so long. Okay. When people they are saying they're having heart burns, it's because they take the black tea, they boil for a long time, they put a lot of leaves. Mm. But just a pinch of tea, and that's what we'll be showing you in Sarit Center mm. over the celebrations we're having. How to prepare tea the right way and to get the best taste and the flavor. Mm -hmm. But we do have the black tea, and then black tea, like I've explained how it's processed. Yes. And then we have the tea that is produced without uh, aeration or what the industry may call fermentation. But we don't want to use that word fermentation. Mm -hmm. It gives a concussion like it's alcoholic. It's just a word they use, but otherwise it's oxidation. Mm -hmm. And then when you don't oxidize much, you get the other types now. You get the yellow mm -hmm. and you get the green. But here is a drink I'll talk about later. This is a fermented called kobucha. Okay. So I'll leave that mm. for, for now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We were not able to bring all the types of teas, but we do have the purple, which is produced using purple leaf. Note that we don't add color in Kenya. There are a lot of countries out there who are having purple tea, which is not natural. 
But in Kenya, we are pro producing purple tea that is uh, from a green leaf purple. You will see it from the farm. So it's different from the, the green leaf that we usually know of tea. So the purple tea has actually some purple leaves in it. Yeah, it's not that we have added color to make it purple. No, no. in the farm. It, in the farm. Yes. At yes. farm level, it grows when it is green, uh, it's purple. Mm -hmm. And then when we come to processing of it, we don't irate so much. Mm -hmm. So that when you now uh, make the drink out of it, mm -hmm. it comes out to be purple. Okay. And that purple is what science we say is has a lot of anthocyanins, mm -hmm. which are also found in berries. Mm -hmm. And all foods that have got a lot of anthocyanins mm -hmm. have strong antioxidant uh, properties okay. that are good for scavenging the free radicals that you know we can cause cancer. Okay. So it's a very good drink. So hold your thought right there with the benefits of purple tea. We'll be back in just a short while. So let's take that break and we'll be back with more. Indeed, uh, welcome back. We are in studio with Dr. Mary Moshiri. She's the director, T Institute, Karatuna University. And we've been talking about the International Tea Day, which is coming up on the 21st of May. There's also going to be an expo just before, be, uh, between, the, I think, the 19th, uh, Dr. Ari? The uh, 19th and 20th. And, and the 20th. We're mm -hmm. going to have uh, the, 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 the expo. We'll be talking about that in just a short while. But before we went on break, we were talking about the benefits uh, of the purple tea. Definitely we want to also touch on the black tea, uh, which uh, most of us consume. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We definitely know and has been known uh, from a long time. People know that tea is good. Yeah. And, um, and even when people wake up in the morning, why has this tea, like you said, like you introduced, yes. as the second yeah. most drunk mm -hmm. after water? Yes. It's because of what tea does in terms of stimulating and uh, our nerves um, when taken in the right quantity. Tea also, especially this black tea, traditionally even people knew when they had a problem with the stomach, you'd see the old mama at home saying, make for me some, in my vernacular it will be called turungi, but it's the, it is true tea. Yes. That is the English word that was coined. Oh, so it's coined. true tea, yes. not turungi. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we coined our own. We coined our own. Okay. But they, they, they had a point. And it, even our, 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 what would I call them? The old people knew mm -hmm. that when you take black tea, somehow it clears the system. Mm -hmm. And so we are encouraging Kenyans, when you wake up in the morning, just start with a small cup, a drink mm -hmm. of black tea. Let it go without milk. Let it go through your system. So that you don't have to say, I'm feeling bad on my stomach, let me take some black tea. Mm -hmm. If you'd make it a habit of when you wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. take some black tea, you will have formed a very good habit. Mm -hmm. And then you stimulate yourself, you're good to go, and, um, and your nerves are up. And there is, it is not like medicine, what people would imagine. Mm -hmm. But that's why we're encouraging you to come and see how to prepare tea in a way that you reap the best benefits of it okay. that is a black tea mm -hmm. so black tea we are here to go we are not going anywhere it is our pride in kenya yeah. and uh, not only just the pride in kenya but globally you know that china sri lanka india they drink their tea the only thing we have we are, i'm afraid to say is that kenyans we are not drinking tea do you imagine China consumes itself with all the tea they make. 95% of its tea is consumed within the country. And meaning they know the benefits. So let's reap these benefits, Kenyans. Let's drink our black tea. When we wake up in the morning, a little break, take some tea. But I thought most Kenyans take tea in the morning. Or what brands do we take? So are you saying that we don't take brands of our own Kenyan tea, but we take tea, but maybe other oh, brands we, from other countries no that's not the point mm. we are not taking as much tea as we ought to oh really yeah i think there's sometimes people think that uh, when i take black tea i will uh, have a problem with my stomach mm. it's just because of the method of preparation okay. but if you take your black tea just by infusion and just take warm water put the black tea or the hot water for black 
We normally okay, we don't just the fact that it's hot, and then uh, you save it immediately. That will not give you so any uh, problem. You're not supposed to boil because, I mean, that's what we know. You put water, it boils. You put the the the, the, the tea leaves and let it boil again. You know, that's not the way we're supposed that's to prepare tea. That's not the way tea is supposed to be prepared. Mm -hmm. If you want to reap the best benefits and not have that what you are calling mm -hmm. the the burn. Tea, different teas have got different temperatures. Now, if you were to go the professional way, yes. uh, the temperature for putting the infusion of black tea is higher than the green and the purple. However, even if you were to get your water boiled without tea first, you boil the water and then you put your black tea inside. And then uh, even if you want to infuse, because some people say they want to feel that, we call it their astringent yeah. taste. Mm -hmm then just do it mildly and or for a short time. Mm. And then you, 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 you sieve it off and then you can now take that tea mm. and you can leave it on your table or you can move it in a flask if you want to take it hot. That's the beauty also of tea. Okay. When it is hot, mm -hmm. take it cold. Mm -hmm. When it is cold, <laughs> <laughs> take it hot. Yeah. So you can take tea, that black tea in all different forms. Mm -hmm. I'll be quite honest, I went to China and I saw that even their children, you know, we were told children don't take tea. Exactly. They said they give you black tea, Probably especially black milk, tea. That's when, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I will emphasize again it is because of the way we prepare. In China, they told me from one year, their children and they have had no problems. But because for them, they don't boil the way we do, mm -hmm. they just infuse okay. the hot water and then they take it in the morning, they give their children and they go to school. Mm -hmm. So the minute you get that, uh, I'll call it a, a, a bit of a bitter taste or yeah. a bitter taste in your mouth, that means you've overprocessed it, or at least you've The bitter, it, yeah. I like the word. The, the bitter, yeah. It's not supposed to be bitter, it's supposed to be an astringent, because mm -hmm. I know we, 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 we uh, Kenyans want kalikidogo. Yes. The, it's supposed to be an astringent, not a bitterness. So where do we put... So we put milk, mm -hmm. that's why we end up putting milk, mm -hmm. because we are finding this thing is bitter. Oh, okay. Just because of the way we prepared it. Mm. But it's not supposed to be. Black tea prepared very well has got an astringent that is good, a good aroma, a smell that comes out very nicely. And that's why when you go somewhere, a house, and you find tea that is prepared well, you say, Can I also have a cup of tea? Mm -hmm. exactly. But when you overboil, now it becomes bitter. Mm. But otherwise, black tea is good, prepared well, not overboiled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to green tea. Uh, one of the uh, Speci you know, specialities. Mm -hmm. This is specialty tea now, mm -hmm. you know, that is produced in Kenya. Maybe you could talk to us also, how do we prepare that and what are some of the benefits of it? Okay. Uh, like you said before, or when you asked me, green tea is one of the specialty teas of Kenya. And uh, prepared the same way, but first of all, it's green. And the leaf, like you can see, mm. it's prepared when the leaf is whole. When it, and the good thing also of the green tea, is that uh, because the leaf is whole, it can be reused again and again. Mm. Because it opens up, you can pour that out, mm -hmm. put it in your thermos or whatever your bottle is, mm -hmm. and then you can put water again. Green tea, like the word, they are, maybe to, that's why it confuses Kenya, big Kenyans, because we have green because of the green leaf. But we do have what they call green teas because of the processing procedure okay. of not being oxidized, like I said, mm. too highly. Mm -hmm. But when you do that, you can see that the infusion will come out green. And then the yellow also is processed. When it's done here in Kenya. We've got factories, both large scale and small scale, uh, that have come up that are processing now the yellow. And yellow, green, purple, Purple, of course, I've got, that's why we call it the association, purple and specialty tea mm. of Kenya. Purple has got its own mm. different benefits. Mm. However, the green and the black, the leaf is still the green mm -hmm. leaf. Yeah. It's just a processing procedure that's different. And of course, you can see we wash, sensory, you call yes. it sensory. Yeah. It is yellow and green in color mm. coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, like you said, uh, don't miss to go to Sarit Center that is between the 19th and the 20th where, you know, Dr. Mushiri and many others will be uh, displaying and exhibiting uh, the different Kenyan teas and definitely learning how to prepare uh, tea properly. Now, does it mean if I put sugar, I do uh, lose some benefits of tea? Does that happen? <laughs> That's a very good question. Yeah. Because, like I said, how we were 
uh, schooled, I call it schooled, yeah. is that tea has got to have a lot of milk, mm. it must have a lot of sugar, mm. now you say your tea is good. I'm here to just uh, say that tea is best drunk without milk and best mm. drunk without sugar. sugar. I will emphasize again, prepared well, you will even begin to like it. Mm. It will get a time when you don't even feel like adding milk to your tea, mm -hmm. neither will you feel like adding sugar. Because you have prepared it well, it got the astringence, and it is not harsh in the mouth. Okay. Kambucha, what is that all about? <laughs> yeah, interesting. Mm. Let me mention something, allow me, even before I come to kombucha, mm -hmm. is that people only know tea in terms of just the beverage which you take hot water and you mm -hmm. put in. Mm -hmm. However, other products are coming up that are made of tea that are food and non-food based. Mm -hmm. Today we are talking more of food, but remember that many cosmetics ladies are using, expensive, mm -hmm. for cleansing, using tea, oh. lotions, mm -hmm. and, and they are true, they are good. But because here we are talking at about tea as a food, um, I will come up and say that other products are coming up. Like in Karatina University, we are doing a purple, I mean, a, a purple tea yogurt. Okay. That is yogurt enriched with tea, which has got scientifically proven benefits. And then we are also doing cakes that are also made up of tea. But now to question you're talking about kombucha. Kombucha is coming out globally. And even Kenya, we have started uh, mm -hmm. one company. When you come to start it, you see mm -hmm. there and you'll be able to taste. It is a fermented tea. Somehow, especially Kenyans, you know how we like even our milk fermented. Yes. So that fermentation uh, taste, we call it the lactic acids and all that goes with fermentation, brings it out in kombucha. But those who know the benefits of fermented products, um, nutritionally, are also embracing kombucha okay. because of that fermentation that goes with it and then the fact that it can keep longer mm. uh, because of the fermentation but uh, it's like please don't think it is it's not a drink that is in the class of alcoholic drinks when I say fermentation to my begin thinking we are mm -hmm. giving people alcohol mm -hmm. high quantity mm -hmm. you know even Mazua Mala is the fermented Chinese milk. Fermented, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and you can take it and not get drunk. <laughs> uh, okay. Yep. Well, a lot to learn, uh, I guess, uh, during the expo. That is where people need to come and yep. really get more information in as far as the different types of teas produced in Kenya. The value addition, I didn't know that, um, you know, you can make cakes out of tea. You can actually, um, yogurt. you know, yogurt. So those are the, some of the value additions that now are coming up and uh, making tea, um, can I say, not n more valuable mm -hmm. or at least uh, diversification that's the word we use exactly mm -hmm. and even in cosmetic products yes you know so let's just delve into something different here what makes kenyan tea that high quality is it the climatic condition what, what makes a, a, a tea uh, to be um, categorized as the best tea okay mm -hmm. uh, let me first of all say generally tea is evaluated mainly even when it's sold at the auction mm -hmm. based on the taste okay um, they taste, they sm we smell, mm -hmm. and then it's given a certain price. Mm -hmm. However, our Kenyan tea has got certain advantages over, I don't mention which other countries, but yeah. our Kenyan tea has got certain uh, advantage and high quality. And what makes you ask, why is it our tea very good and high quality? We start from the ground, our soils just from how where our Kenyan grounds where we are growing our tea. Mm -hmm. And remember our grounds, like I say, we don't go adding um, we fertilizers and mm -hmm. just a lot of uh, mm -hmm. unhealthy things. Mm -hmm. So when that tea now grows, that tea, like I said, is almost organic. And those who know how to taste it, they can taste this is tea mm -hmm. without any chemicals mm -hmm. with it. So the taste of the tea comes out very well. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to harvesting, we Kenyans are very careful. If it is two leaves and a bed, you go and ask even the mama in the village who does the harvesting, mm -hmm. they don't go for anything. They harvest two leaves and a bed. And then when it comes to processing, you can see a factory like KTD has been there for a long time. Why? Because when it comes to processing, we follow the, what we call the standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm for manufacturing mm -hmm. and we are very very careful mm -hmm. as far as quality is concerned okay. 
Okay. And we, okay. I, I, I want us to, to go a little bit faster yeah. because <laughs> there's a lot to talk about tea. <laughs> I didn't know we could take a lot of time talking <laughs> about tea. So, um, well, as you are also a researcher in yeah. this particular industry, cost of production sometimes has been an issue. How can, uh, how do you think technologically probably um, uh, we can take advantage to make the, to, to lower the cost of production uh, for farmers, that is? Okay, thank you. Um, so true. But like you, we have said that uh, we have had a large company, large scale farmers mm -hmm. um, and uh, large scale producers, mm -hmm. processors. The purple and speciality teas, you'd be no believe it. Their industries are almost smaller than your, where we are seated here. Mm -hmm. And that has brought down the cost okay. because the machines are, are smaller in size. So it is affordable. Mm -hmm. So, and that with the farmer benefits mm -hmm. Because these specialty tea factories, even the large scale farmers, I mean the, the large scale producers, mm -hmm. have embraced the technology of producing smaller quantities, mm -hmm. and that makes our tea, tea um, the processing cost mm -hmm. go down. Mm -hmm. And that way, uh, we are able to take more and benefit, especially the Kenyan small scale farmer, who now quickly can take to the different small scale industries that are all over from Nandi to Central Province to Meru, mm -hmm. we go, and when they come to study center, they will see them there. All those factories that have come up, why have we come, how do we have those small scale farm um, processors, SMEs coming up? Mm -hmm. Because the cost of production has come down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so there are uh, better prospects for tea farmers. You know, there's, I mean, a, f a few times we've had uh, challenges there yeah. when it comes to their bonuses and payments and all that. But uh, last but not least, um, you could talk to us about the expo and what to expect uh, between the 19th and the 20th. That is your camera. So you can talk to Kenyans. Okay. Yes. Yeah. On 19th and 20th, uh, we are having an, what we are calling the tea tasting and the tea experimenting and the being shown how to prepare tea. We welcome you to Sarit Center. It begins right in the morning up to six o'clock. You'll be shown the different types of teas. And then we have got the climax of the celebration, which is the International Tea Day, which is going to be on the Sunday, 21st. The industries have also come together at Embu, Embu University of Embu, where different industries have also going to be a dual display. But for the preparation of how the different types of teas that we have, tea types of products, I welcome you to come to Sarit Center where you will be able to see all that we have been talking about and be able to taste, not just to see, Yes. and be shown how to prepare the different types of teas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Mushiri. We have been talking to Dr. Mary Mushiri, who is the director of Tea Institute, Karatina University. She, is, she has been taking us through, uh, you know, tea uh, processes that, uh, you know, the process that it takes to make tea and the benefits of tea and also inviting you just as you've had to the Sarit Center on the 19th and 20th and definitely culminating to the International Tea Day on the 21st of May. So hope you'll be able to make time. If you're a tea lover, this is a place that you do not want to miss to get to know the different types of teas and also the value additions uh, that uh, uh, tea is uh, capable of. Now, um, uh, just before I wind up, I want to introduce my colleagues who are in studio, Vivian and Mike. It's Entertainment Thursday, but before that, did you know all this about tea? Or did you take your tea this morning? Well, I did take my tea. I actually yeah. took tea this morning, a flavored mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But I have gotten so much information about tea right now that I had no idea about. As you said mm -hmm. when you were beginning, yeah. when you just, you don't think there's anything to talk about tea, you just drink mm -hmm. your tea. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting, Mike. Personally, I'm curious about the fermented one. How does it taste? Mm. And are there any effects? Because I wouldn't want to be, you know, <laughs> somewhere <laughs> driving and maybe it has some type of effect. Is there an effect <laughs> to the fermented one? <laughs> maybe Dr. Mushiri can take a, a, some seconds just to explain whether... 
I will again tell him, come to Sarit Center. <laughs> you will taste it when our products go through Kenya Bureau Standards yeah. for you to actually do sell products. Mm -hmm. they, w they are tested. Mm -hmm. And we are not the only ones who are taking even fermented or yogurt that mm -hmm. is made of tea. Mm -hmm. I would really be interested in the yogurt. I never it's knew that. Nice. Was I never knew that either. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know? So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mushiri, once again. I want to hand it over now to Mike and Vivian. We'll be taking through. Uh, we will be taking you through the entertainment Thursday. But remember, 19th and 20th is the expo, and the International Tea Day is on the 21st of May. So from me, it's goodbye for now. See you next week. <laughs>